brother. How you doing? bro? Man, it's been a while. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. Just want to let you know I'm happy for you. Proud of you. Keep grinding. Keep, you know, keep doing what you got to do and keep staying on the right path and keep feeding our people, you know, the proper yes, knowledge sir. and everything that they need. Cause, you know, yes, sir. So, so let me ask you a question. What ended up happening with your situation? I just, just stayed in my life for real. Just, you know, one thing I, what I really learned from that was, uh, the media controls everything because they would literally like my side never really got told so they would come to interview me for hours and hours and take one part of what i said then take match it with a whole another part it was like me and my family was just sitting there watching like damn like they got me looking like they really had me looking really passive and that just wasn't what i that wasn't what i was saying you know mm -hmm. i was kind of like, that's that's why i tell people yeah don't trust that, that uh that white change. over media man the media they, go, they like you said they will interview you or if you do if you are interviewed by them in the past, in the future, put your phone down and record that job. And that way we yeah, so had it. It's, crazy. It's, just... it's crazy you say that because my best friend, he's no longer with us. He was the one recording interviews. All the interviews that we did was on his phone. And literally after that happened, he you know passed like three weeks later. So Oh wow. Yeah. You never and you never got none of the footage. Yeah, so it's just lesson. I mean, now it's a lesson learned. So I just biggest thing than that, you can't trust anything the media say. And I just really, you know, I let attorneys deal with it, and I just I live in my life. You feel me? I don't yeah, get too yeah. engulfed with all the online. And then like something else happened while I went viral again. So I just the internet's the internet. It's, you know, make money from you, make money from it. But how you been doing yourself though? Right. Well, what's up? I said, how you been doing yourself? What you say? I said, oh, how you man. been doing yourself? I've been just out here. Just, just... Oh, I'm doing good, man. I'm just working and grinding out here. You know how it goes here. I'm up, I'm up late just finished good, grinding. Good. So I try to grind people. Cheers, same you know thing. Yeah, most definitely. This little uh, virus didn't, didn't kind of impact me very different than what I'm used to. Like the last eight years of my life, I, I've not, I haven't had a job in eight years because I've just been an entrepreneur. But with this virus in my business right. not being non-essential, uh, tomorrow I'm actually going to start filling out some job applications and stuff because the last couple of months I've been living off my savings. That's not cool. So, you know, just do what I got to do to figure this out. And, 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 you know, as a man, I recommend any young man on this, on this thing should read this book called The Way of the Superior Man. And what it talks about is men, we go through three different phases in life. The first phase is which – you know, we want to make money. We want to make money. We just want to make money. We want to take care of ourselves and make money. The second phase is what we want to give. We want to build and give to others. The third phase is that you guys have to understand, and I think it's very, very important, especially through this pandemic, not just a pandemic, that in life, everything is always going to change. Whatever, like, mm -hmm. it's always going to change. Nothing's ever going to be the same. So it's very important as men that you be very adaptable to, to your circumstances and everything that's going on in life, especially if you have family. You know, you can't, you can't just be narrow-minded or, or one-track-minded. You have to be versatile in how you think so that you can provide and do what you need to do so that you do continue to live a happy life because things in life is always going to change. So that's something that yes, one, sir. I'm currently Yes, reading. sir. Well, let, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Um, cause see, when, I'm, when I met with it, it's like I look at this decade as my decade to uh, basically build it up while I can back off. Now, are you are you in that position yet? I'm in. A, I'm in. A, I'm in a different position where, honestly, because I, I, I want anybody, any young entrepreneur on here that's on here, I want them to learn from my. I'm 25, so I want you to learn from my mistakes. Um, I'm. It's not. And I'm not saying in a. In a. I made a lot. I made over a million dollars, close to a million dollars, probably like nine hundred thousand since the age of 20, and did, spent most of it. Spent most of it on dumb stuff. So I'm telling you now, guys, if you're making any type of money. Put it away. So to answer your question, am I in the position to back off? No, I'm not. But will I be in the next few years? Yes. And I've learned the hard way, but I'm glad I learned now. Then, you know, years later, because it was at a time where I could have backed back if I played my cards a certain way. I mean, I'm still fine. I'm still good. But I happen to, I happen to, I have, I have a gift. I have an advantage. And I just, this situation just makes me appreciate it a lot, a lot, a lot more. Never take it for granted again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. 25. Oh yeah, you got you got some good good years left in you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I was not like you know financially. I think I like not just financially. I touched my first six figures, and I was like twenty. So it was like I 
I've been, I've been, I used to be homeless when I was 18. I was homeless. I'm 17. I, I left my mama's house at 17. So like I'm from Chicago. So this is a, you know, short period of time. It's just a, a total, a total, a total 180 from my life. So I've been, I've been blessed. Um, and just the biggest thing I say with people in life and any young person is just don't follow the crowd, don't follow the crowd and, and, and just think outside the box and pay attention to what's not working for people and pay attention to, to the people that you see that's winning. And that's something that I always kind of leave and stuff like that. And, you know, one thing that really helped me is I kind of had mentors along the way or certain whether it's family members or whether it's, you know, professional people. And I always just kind of paid attention uh, to the things that they was doing. And I kind of took in advice and, um, and in terms that I know, it's so probably I know you got the young kid on here earlier. A lot of young people on here because they want to know how to make money and this and this and that. My biggest thing is I just you know kind of same thing with a relationship. I'm not going to take a relation advice from a relationship from a person that's not happily married. So in terms of doing what you want in life, look at where you're receiving your information from. Look at you know just because they have this title, you know, but look at how productive they are, you know, with the information that they give you. So that's all I really got to say. Anything you can got something coming out dropping anything. And congratulations to the million uh million subscribers on YouTube. I seen that a while back. Oh, oh I, pre I appreciate it, bro. Well, you know, I, I'm the type of person that uh you'll see when it happens. I, I don't, I, I'm not one to reveal anything. I'm telling you, teach something like that. You never see, reveal nothing. I'm, 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 I'm spilling this. <laughs> what? <laughs> most definitely, most definitely, man. I said I'm spilling yeah, the tea too quick. Create, yeah, yeah, yeah. You could, you could uh create enemies by revealing your plan. So I always tell people, stay tuned. You you see, for sure, for sure, for sure, man. It's glad to. I know we had a little. I know we had a little. Di well, because of the media, we had a little, a little difference. You thought I did. I'm saying one thing, but just glad to be able to have an actual conversation with you. You know, and uh, be able to vibe with you and things like that, man. Whenever I'm in, you're in Dallas, correct? Houston, Houston, Houston. Okay, well, I think I'll be in Houston in a couple of months. Whenever I'm there, I definitely like to sit down and have lunch with you. My, my treat. Man. Oh no, no, no problem, brother. No. Problem. I mean, we can, uh, you know, just just let just let us know. You know, there's plenty good restaurants here. You know, I don't know you're probably a vegan or something. So uh, you, know, you, 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 <laughs> I, you be paying attention. Yeah, I don't really get down. You know, I used to eat meat, man, but like I, I think I think you should watch. It's called What's the Health? It's a documentary on Netflix. I don't, I don't eat meat, brother. Oh, okay, yeah, I don't, I don't eat, eat meat either. Man. Okay, cool. We on the same. You already know. No, I don't eat chicken. I don't eat none of that crap. Forget that. I heard it about to be a meat shortage. Yeah, I don't eat none anyway, of that. So that's good for me. And I'm good. Yeah, I don't eat it either, man. I was, yeah, I don't eat it. I, I tell people all the time, you know, which which you eat a which you eat, you eat a you eat a chicken, right? Which you eat a, which you eat a pigeon. So why would you eat a chicken? It's still the same thing as a dead bird, you know. Like you, you, you know, people eat. Yeah, nah, I, don't fool, I don't fool with it, brother. Mm -mm. <laughs> Look, you know what? Let me let me, let me just say, vegan, vegan, vegan what you gonna see in here, brother? Yeah, you gonna see in here a lot of fruits and vegetables. That's 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 pretty much it, man. We we not we not. We're not, we're not doing none of that. But it's been, it's been yeah. real speaking, which has been real speaking, which I'm about to get up in a couple of hours. Yeah, yeah, it's good, it's good having that your brother to you. Yeah, stay up. You too, stay positive, stay proud. So, and I appreciate you. Much love to you. Yeah. All right, bro. Take care. Right, bro. Take care. You too. I get off here. This thing right here. Okay. Yeah, it, it was, it was good to talk to that brother. If, uh, if you guys remember, he, he was the brother that was uh going into his uh his condo area and this uh Becky was uh not letting him in and uh blonde haired Becky and he lives there and she kept trying to follow him. I don't know if you remember that story where uh that was uh that's that brother right there. So it's good it, it, I'm glad he's doing good um and everything. He young brother, you know, uh probably figure out a way to make some money. I see you know when they put out this narrative about brothers, man and well, our black men don't know how to do different things, or we all broke and poor, and all that. That's a freaking lie. The black men that I know, or black men that, that take care of their business, black men that you know went to school or just started businesses, etc. And wow, I just can't accept. You know, they always going to point out the worst of the worst, or the dusty of the dusty. Of course, you'll point them out, but they never want to point out the brothers that's doing good out here. Yeah, you say you remember his story? Yeah. Hello. Oh. Hello. Yeah, you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. 
but yeah children are funny they always tell you what's on their mind no filter <laughs> yeah kids kids and old people that's what they always say they will they will tell you the truth they will tell you what's on their mind with no filter but i was actually talking to um zolo i don't know if you know him like he usually posts like a lot of stuff from your page and me and him were talking and we were discussing your post about the black woman who the black women who go to non black owned salons and him and I we were discussing and we were thinking of like a solution because I know you know a lot of black business owners if it would be possible for black business owners to choose a day and maybe like a certain time like from I don't know what time they open maybe 10 from like 10 to 3 or 10 to 5 where they can possibly try to price match you know these local non-black owned salons because as soon as things open back up they're probably going to make their rates even cheaper too just to get people into the doors mm -hmm. I mean well that's one business strategy um to do that, I agree with that. It's actually a very good business strategy. Very good one. So yeah, but I was key, saying that you know, is, you said the key is what? But the key is, um, well, they, my problem with some of that is this, you know, it's, it's black people. We will pay for iPhone. iPhone don't give us no discount. Um, we're willing to pay for Jordan. We're willing to pay for whatever else. And they don't give us a, a, a discount at all. Um, but when it comes to black people, we always want to be cheap. Now I understand the the the, the Asians or whatever they they do that because they don't pay their people, so they can afford to do that. Um, but you know, yeah, I'm not, I understand you do your research your competition. That's just business research your competition, and see if you can either price match them or undermatch them to get people in the door, and then then get get them hooked, and then you you can slowly bring it up. Because see, when the Asians get you in there, they're like, oh yeah, yeah, I can do that for you, just five dollars more. You know, that sort of thing. Well, I think that, like I said, even if it's for one day, the benefit of that will be great because we can keep the black dollar in the community longer. And also, I see a bunch of businesses that do that. I mean, there are like two pizza shops near me. I remember one of them when school, this was a long time ago when I was in junior high, but they used to have pizza for like a dollar from like three to five. And then once the other pizza shop saw that they were doing that, they started doing that too. So it would be good if they chose it just one day. It doesn't have to be like all seven days that they're open, but just one day to price. That would make a trem tremendous difference. But, but this is my issue. We have to go back to this. The issue is sisters like yourself will have to engage that more than me because these are other these these are women you understand sure i'll make my points but what could what could women like yourself do to, to fix that issue because it's women that's doing it you're talking about the nail shops yeah No, I'm asking you a question. Yeah, I'm talking about the nail shops. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I'm asking. You, what, what I'm telling you is, well, what, what, why do you think the women don't check the women on those on those issues? Because, like, uh, how much more, like, you know, I'm even getting to a point with even commentating on those kind of videos anymore. It's like, if you keep going to these people's nail shops and they're treating you any kind of way, then what is the point of me saying anything about it? It's like you must want to get treated that way. Well, from my knowledge, from speaking to women, um, I remembered, I don't know if you remember, this is like two years ago, there was like a nail shop here in Brooklyn, where the owners and the uh, workers threw acetone on a black woman, and they mm -hmm. beat her with the broom. Yeah, red and, apple. Um, I remember because many of us protested, on t it, by the way, we got that salon to shut down, and there's actually a black owned bakery in its place now. Good. Good. So, but, but, when I was asking good. the women about Go that, mm -hmm. when I was asking the women about that, they said that they the Black-owned salons, you know, typically charge more money because there is a Black-owned salon. Um, I mean, Brooklyn is huge. There is a Black-owned salon um, on the because that part of Brooklyn would be considered um, East Flatbush. There's another Black-owned salon 
in bedside and there's one a little bit closer that I would say is about seven blocks up. And when I was asking the women, they were like, well, yes, you know, um, they're more expensive to go to these salons. And then it's like some women don't mind paying a little bit more money, but it's like you pay a little bit more money and what do you get? It's like, you know, is there like an experience? Because at the one that's in bed on Saturdays, they serve sangria. So I think women okay. just want to feel like... So, so how much, how much... Well, let me ask you a question. How much more are they charging than the Asians? Like, give, give me give me a price. So when I went to go to the Black-owned salon to go get my nails done, the the price um to get feet... I haven't been to an Asian-owned salon in a while, but I remember, I think it was like maybe $17 at the Asian-owned salon and $25 to get your feet done at the Black-owned salon. But women like to get tips on their fingernails. Now, at the Asian-owned salon, it was 25 And at the Black-owned salon, it was $70. So that's quite a bit of a difference. Hold on a second. So uh, just to get your nails done by the Black people, it was uh, 25 and Asians charged 17 right? To get, your, to get a pedicure, to get your feet done. Okay, it's pedicure. And then you get your nails done, and you say yeah. you want tips? Yeah, the, the acrylic tips, women like to get tips on their fingers. And at the Asian-owned salon, it was $25. And at the Black-owned salon, it was $70. So, okay, now let me ask you a question, quality-wise. Um, is it quality? Okay, because I'm trying to just, because everything that I do in business, I always ask a question about justification. You understand? Um, okay, you said Miss Anastasia Talton. Okay, um, well, shoot, you can come on the show. They say it probably even be better, but I can talk to you about that. But let me ask you, let me ask you a question um, now. Is the quality better at the black salon over the Asian? Because I'm trying to justify the price. So the pedicures, I will say this, hands down, the black-owned salon does the best pedicures because what they do is that, like, this machine, that like goes on your feet and it like smooths out your feet so like the pedicures hands down are really really good and then the one in bed side on saturday they serve sangria but as for the nails i think that they do nails well do i think that it's 70 dollars worth of well no but i do think that they do nails well okay so 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 the twenty five dollars. So you think okay. So you say the pedicures are better at the black salon for twenty five. They're way they're, better. Way better. Okay, and then and really the price difference is about from what I see here eight dollar difference. That's an eight dollar difference from what the Asians charge into what you're saying they're charging at the black salon. Now what I'm trying to understand is why do we have almost getting close to a fifty dollar difference with the with getting the tips versus the Asian. Like what 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 is they doing with their tips over what the Asians are doing? But see, you know, like like I understand certain prices um are, are there for reasons, but I I'm just trying to get an understanding. Um personally I don't know why it costs that much because even me when it was time to pay and they told me it was seventy dollars, I was like seventy dollars. And you know of course I paid because they provided me with a service, so I paid them for the service they provided me. But, you know, I can understand why it's hard for women to go in there because it's like, yes, they do nails. They do a good job. But honestly, it's not $70 worth of, you know, I'm going to pay you $70 to do my nails for one day. I mean, that's most people probably only make like $20 an hour, if even that. Okay. So at the Asians for $25, how is the quality? I think the quality is good. It depends what salon you go to. Some salons, I think that they do nails good. And then others of them, I don't think they knew, do nails very well because they just have these new people sometimes, like every six months or every six to nine months, it's somebody new. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So so do you think the quality of the product was better? Black salon, because see, well, the reason why I keep asking these questions to you, because like I said, I'm not, a, I don't go, I'm not a man to, to be getting my nails done like that. But what I'm saying is, like, for me to charge you seventy dollars, I couldn't even I imagine to... you getting a manicure. 
No, but I, I, but I definitely would get a pedicure. So twenty five dollars, no issue. Bianca, are you still there? Yeah, I think the twenty five dollars. Yeah, I'm here. I think Instagram is messing with the live because anytime we talk about important topics, for some reason it just freezes up. Oh, that's weird over there. I see. I see it on my end. Um, but but what I'm saying is, um, hey hey, uh, time time uh, time zone or whatever. Hey man, chill out with that man. We we trying to have a conversation. Um, we don't call women that over here. Anyway. Um, so what I'm saying is you paid the $70. Do you think your nails, the quality of the nails is better uh, than maybe what the Asians are using? Or, Cause usually you, you bring up prices based on, um, supply, like equipment, or maybe you're using better things. Okay, Cause I've heard stories from black women that the Asians are so cheap, but they also is not as hygienic as well. And people have gotten fungus and all kinds of other things in them places. So have you heard that? I have certainly heard that. And let me just say this. The black-owned nail salon that I went to, it was very clean. But I've also been to, you know, some Chinese-owned nail salons that are also clean. Like I said, I think that the black-owned salon, I think that they do nails well. Do I think that it's $70 worth of well? I, but I do think that they do acrylics well in that salon. Okay, okay. So, but I don't know, because I've seen women pay some money for their nails, you know, especially, like, even around here in Houston. Um, and I don't know. I just need to find out how much how much um, the nails are, because I don't really know that. I just know to make sure it's a, you know, uh, my wife makes sure she get her stuff done, because I'm, I'm, real, I'm real funny about women having their hands and their feet done. I'm very funny about that. Um, especially a one pet peeve I have is seeing a woman walk around with open toe shoes or sandals and, and their feet isn't phone. done. Oh my gosh, I hate yeah. that. <laughs> I hate that. Like, you look like an unmade bed, man. Like go put some nails on something. I'm somebody say, I don't care if you go go get some nail polish from whatever Walmart. I don't care. Put some nail polish on them feet. Oh, I hate it with, with nothing on. I don't know. That doesn't pet peeve of mine. You know what's so funny? This guy who used to um hire for jobs that I knew he came to my college and I remember he told the ladies he's like ladies if you're coming for a job interview with open toe shoes please make sure that you get your feet done I did not hire a woman because she did not get her feet done and she was wearing open toe shoes well you know the saying about that um, you could tell a lot about a woman how she take care of her feet you this know why true. yeah yeah, because that's one of the most insignificant parts of your body. And if you take care of that, then you take care of other things. So, you know, you need to look at a woman and see see what she got going on with that. And it's not that you're into somebody's feet like that. I think that's weird if you got a, if people is in people's feet. But I'm just usually looking to see if she take care of it. You know, I'm like, how you out here talking about, you know, walking around with open toe shoes and, and you ain't got you ain't got your feet straight. This is true, yeah. That's a shade butt on or whatever. Absolutely. Yeah, that's even even even, even yeah, men. When you... you know, men should you know, men shouldn't be out here with no sandpaper feet either. You know, this is your man. Take care of your situation. <laughs> this is true. Women like it when men take care of their feet, gentlemen. Just take note of that. Oh yeah, you know you're gonna be putting you're gonna be uh, putting a hole in, in the sheets. It depends what kind of sheet you have. Let me back up. If you start getting to that, uh, you know, the higher thread counts, you don't want to have no uh, sandpaper feet. You know, and and I don't know if I don't know if you uh, fool with higher thread counts, but uh, they're wonderful. I believe every person should have at, at minimum seven hundred thread count sheets. At minimum, thousand is even better. You know, pay the money. Trust me, I believe that the most comfortable place you should have in your life is your bed and your shoes. Absolutely. Mm. But when you speak to, um, like I said, when you speak to these black business owners, please, if you can ask them to like choose a day to price match, just a single day, that would be 
like a wonderful way to get women into the doors. That you you're right about that, and they I, I need to find out are they doing research on their competition because that's just part of business. Even if they don't want to do it, they should hire somebody to go to all these little Asian shops and find out um, what they're charging. And then bring it back to them and say, hey, look, they're charging for this for manicures, this for pedicures, they're charging this for facials, they're charging this, you know, and get a, and get an average price of what they're charging and see, if, like you said, either price match or match underneath them by $5. Because trust me, even just matching underneath them $5 will get, will get you. Uh, people come in the door. Absolutely. And another thing, there are always people watching black business owners. They're always watching us. They're always watching our moves. They watch us, you know, from our videos and everything. So it's like, we need to watch them too. Because our competition is watching us. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anything that I do, I'm constantly watching and studying and, 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 and making moves, you know, what I have to do. But that's just part of, I'm not watching you just so the fact I'm worried about you, but I'm just, hey, you just got to know, you know, who's in your space and do you need to perform more or maybe they're doing something better than you. Um, and you need to step it up, you know, because I've seen people that are, are different. You know, I'm competing in my arena. So I'm like, hey, I got to step it up. You know, I got to do this, I got to do that, or you're going to get left behind. That's just the way that works. But um, Bianca, yeah, this live is about to end here in uh, about a minute. But uh, it was good talking to you. Oh, good talking to you, too. Thank you, Brother Phil.